Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. Oh, Day we hustle, but the night we. Oh, Know that they ride or die. Hello, everybody. Thank you and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Francina. I live and work in Japan. So if you are a returning subscriber, hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. I truly 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 appreciate it okay so come on what's going on today okay so I wanna say cheers to everybody who is watching this video right now but first of all I wanna thank me okay I wanna thank me you know for being a mother I wanna thank me for being able to carry my kids in this tummy for nine months because today our topic is about giving birth in Japan and giving birth in Lesotho. I'm going to discuss two differences, you know. So come on, grab your drink and let's hop into this topic, you know. You know how we do it here. Cheers. This is drink and talk. Come on, let's do this. Okay, so now that we all have our drinks and everything is on check, I want to tell everybody that I have two kids and both of them, they are born in two different places. My son is born in Lesotho and my daughter is born in Japan. So now that we have all that cleared up, come on, let's talk, okay, let's talk about giving back. Into the, I might, I, I might, I, I must say, I have experience in this topic. Be, okay, I'm, I'm not drunk yet. I'm not drunk yet. Okay, I must say, I have experience in this topic because not everybody experience having, giving birth in two different places. So let's jump and discuss this topic further. Okay. Okay, I remember last time when I was recording a drink and talk uh, uh, video, I messed it up because I was too drunk. But today I'm not that drunk, so I still have my th things in check. So, topic first thing. I want to talk about health insurance. Having a good health insurance when you are a mother is one of the most important things. So, here is how this goes. In Japan, everybody pays health insurance, which guarantees them like good health care when people are sick or it gives them the opportunity to see doctors and they can be able to pay less money. Okay, so health insurance in Japan is number one. I love health insurance in Japan because going to Japanese hospitals, clinics, whether you are about to have a major surgery or whether you have a headache. Japanese doctors treat you the same. It doesn't matter how much you are paying because they value life. Okay, let's go to Lesotho. Lesotho, we don't have health insurance. Okay, I don't know if things changed, but we don't have health insurance. The only thing that I know we have is funeral cover. When you are dead, then people can be able to benefit from your death or your kids can be able wow. to survive. That's the good point about it. But to be honest, I think people should be, we should pay health insurance so that we can take care of our health while we are still alive so we can be able to live longer. Not uh, after, how, who cares about you after you are dead because the only thing we gotta do is eat that money. So that's the difference between Japan and Lesotho. Japan, health insurance is on top. It's top notch. I love it. And health care, first class. I love it. Lesotho, you have to pay extra bucks to get certain health care, you know. So that's what I really don't like. But the good thing about Lesotho is that we have free hospitals, you know. We have free clinics and hospitals where people have 
we have free health care that's what they say or you can also go to private hospital to pay some money then extra money then you can get first class or near to first class uh, <laughs> service you know nobody should be fighting for first class service when they are on bed and they are screaming they have their ba the babies on the way you see what I like about Japan the fact that they value life and they value children you know they will never put a mom in danger a person who is about to give birth need first class health you know okay number two in Japan there is a lot of support whether it's a person who is not married a single mother or a person who has kids you know there is always there whether it's a person who is married in Japan there is like um, kids money and stuff like that but for me as a single mother I was able to get like good care when I was after giving birth because I'm a single mother so I got single mother support in order to support my children you know where if I don't have a job those are the things I really really value but in Lesotho you don't have support okay no support at all the only support you have are your neighbors which is really really important you know having support from your neighbors people who will be able to look after your kids when you go and hustle that's what we don't have in Japan in Japan single mother support and you can be able to breathe and get that support while you're still struggling and finding a job or if you don't have enough income then you can be able to compensate wherever you, are, you have struggles but in Lesotho no no support from the government you have to hustle so the only support you have is community support okay okay let's go to another topic number three when I left uh, the hospital after giving birth so Japanese people know that after a person gives birth there's a lot of uh, expenses to take care of a kid you know so as a single mother I got money like a lump sum money to take care of my baby and to also pay the insurance and to also pay they stay in the hospital because I stayed in a hospital for a long time because I had complications with my second baby. But in Lesotho, in Lesotho you give birth today and take your bags tomorrow and leave and you are broke. You don't know how you're going to survive when you get back home. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm. nobody should go through that, okay? So people don't have financial support, whether you're a single mother or you have parents, you don't have parents, it doesn't matter. You just boop, ba and go, you know, just give birth and go, you know. This is very, very difficult for people who don't have anything or any money to survive or any family or any type of financial support, you know. Okay. Oh my Who's God, I'm the so mad. Oh no! Okay. okay. I just realized I've been blaming myself for the past two minutes and I didn't record anything. This is not fair. That's why I need a smart camera, you know. <laughs> so, the topic I'm gonna repeat again. <laughs> I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy. But the topic is Japanese people have no clue about foreigners. So when it comes to giving birth, there are so many things that people should be able to, you know, like when you are going through some tests and checks and stuff like that. Uh, I feel like Japanese people, they don't know foreigner bodies, so they don't even know what's going on. So I remember when I was um, going to give birth, I went in hospital in uh, for one week because I was having complications so I remember I went to my normal clinic and then the clinic called the ambulance to take me to a big hospital because I was having complications I don't know I didn't know that I was having complications but I my water broke uh, the night uh, 
before like the next morning so i didn't feel any pains just the water broke and that's it so i went to the clinic and the clinic said oh my god you're having complications so the water broke so we need to call ambulance i thought they are blowing things out of proportion but you know they know what they are doing of course i said the services in japan you know they care about life and they care about children you know so i went to a big hospital i stayed there for one week and this one week i have i was going through so many pains you know every night i will go through labor pains but they tell me no you are going through labor pains we can see that but these pains are not leading to giving birth i said what i have never had that in my my life i have heard of braxton braxton he okay but i have never heard of pains that are not leading to giving birth a person is having these pains for one week who who what i couldn't believe it you know but okay all is well i stay in the hospital i stay in icu separated from other people private room and they are monitoring me so you know i i'm still i still don't even understand you know because they told me you are going through so many much pain like you are saying but unfortunately we cannot induce you we cannot do c-section because we will only do those things when you are you are like 34 weeks we will think about them when you are 34 weeks but for now we cannot do anything because you are not even 34 weeks yet so we don't want to put your child in danger or give you any type of complication oh my god there is something in here <laughs> so as i was saying i stayed in hospital for one week pains plus no no in induction or inducing or something like that so this is so amazing surprising because i remember when i was going to my normal checkups i used to go to one male doctor and this doctor used to like i wasn't comfortable with the way he was handling me because i remember you know when you are checking we go for checkups so there is this stick and then you put something like condom on top and then you will be checked inside so this guy keep forgetting this thing this condom inside me like why are you doing that i'm not comfortable with this situation right now okay he forget this thing inside of me and he will come back again and take it out like what why are you doing that this is already embarrassing and see yes it is so these people don't understand this garden you know so they it's like oh my god i don't want people to be looking at me down there you know i don't like it i don't feel comfortable doing that at all at all so <laughs> so i left and i went to another clinic okay let's continue to where i was in hot big hospital so i went to a big hospital stayed there blah 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 and then the week goes so now i'm 34 weeks and i'm still in pain every night i'm in pain it took <clears throat> 24 hours doctors monitoring me very closely in these 24 hours because i went to a labor ward this time so i i was in labor ward near exactly to the bed where i was gonna give birth you know so they monitor me they keep checking me all types of doctors keep coming and check i said i'm in a lot of pain right now i'm telling you even this contraction contractions are closed right now you know and they say yes yes we can see you we can see you but look the you are not open like the centimeters are not you know big enough i don't know how to explain this so you need to open a little bit more i'm like oh my god i'm feeling so much pain and these contra contractions are getting closer but then like few minutes later another doctor come and check me and say oh my god she's about to give birth i can see her head oh my god and they rushed me to the um bed where I, I, I gave birth immediately in seconds like oh my god you people keep poking me but you didn't see that i'm about to give birth are you serious 
oh my god the most embarrassing thing a person giving birth can go through okay but let's talk about Lesotho okay being a foreigner so in a in a country where you're not a foreigner obviously people understand your body much better you know so giving birth uh, you don't feel uncomfortable like nobody's gonna leave no things inside you you know but <laughs> Yeah, that's how it is you know people don't understand the type of body you have and if it's open or it's, i don't know i don't know i can't even explain this situation but that was the most uncomfortable situation i've been through okay okay so we are back let's keep uh talking so uh another e thing is hospitalization so in japan after a person gives birth let's say you are going tonight in the hospital and say oh my god i'm giving birth Aha! then you give birth the same night so you are going to be hospitalized for one week regardless of your situation and if you have a bad situation you will be hospitalized for more you know that's what that's what I don't understand but I love it I love it trust me I love that situation because I felt so happy that at least for one week I'm around people who have kids and everybody's talking and the P Japanese doctors they keep checking you checking your blood pressure and checking if you are mentally okay and all those things I love 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 that you know that's why in Japan people like there is a low mortality rate like kids don't die after being given birth or or even people don't die after giving birth because they are constantly monitored to see if they are okay mentally or physically especially physically because it's important for a person who just bombed the baby out of themselves to be monitored and see that they are okay they are okay to go back to the community to take care of their kids and enjoy motherhood okay and one thing i love about japan i know when after giving birth you want to cuddle with your baby you want to stay very close to your kid but not in japan in japan give birth if you you don't stay in a private uh in a private uh what you call private room because in japan you can rent a private room in a normal hospital you know it depends on how much money you have but that money is more than a five-star hotel okay so you go and give birth and for this one week you leave your baby in the big kids room and you go sleep in your bed and the baby is being monitored while you sleep and have a peaceful night so you can either breastfeed or you go and breastfeed on the right time or you go give your baby a bottle at the right time you know but you are not close i think that is really a good idea because some people after giving birth they are not mentally okay so they can actually harm babies but this type of distance it's good for people who have that type of situation you know but for people who are excited to be mad oh, oh, oh i want my baby i want to smell her okay it's not good but i love love that situation because i could come down and look forward to see my baby although my baby was in a what you call incubator my baby was small so she was in the incubator i couldn't cuddle her but when she was out there was the happiest person ever okay so that's how it goes in japan but in our countries you give birth and then you go the same day this is why we have a high mortality rate and we have people dying after giving birth there are so many stories of people dying after giving birth because they don't have good treatment you know after they give birth some people lose a lot of blood but they have to go and live the same day some people have like maybe some problems complications so people die after giving birth which is really sad because i truly truly think people after giving birth they need to be given 
time in order to adjust to their situation because giving birth it's a big thing it's the biggest thing in the world you know we are humans because we we have uh, the opportunity to reproduce you know so that situation can drive you crazy because some people get depressed because they don't know what they are going to do they come back into the society with the babies and they don't know how am I going to feed this child but if you take a time take one week at home I mean in the hospital then you can regroup and say okay okay this is what I'm going to do okay Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the family support or communi community support. In Japan, I don't have family. Okay, I don't have family. After I pop my baby out of me, I don't have anybody I can talk to about motherhood. I don't have support group or anybody who I can talk to about giving birth, you know. How can I do this? How do I change a diaper? Ooh, what can... Oh my God! Then there's nothing like that, you know. But back in our countries, I remember when our before I give birth to Alex, I used to go to a clinic, and a clinic used to give us like workshops from how what's gonna happen when you are three months pregnant. They have workshops for people until you get. And these workshops, I remember back home, they are compulsory for people who are going to give birth you know and after you give birth you feel prepared i know when i was giving birth to alex i was super prepared because i know what type of formula i'm gonna give him i know what i needed to buy before the baby's here but in japan you don't know you don't know what you need you know you don't know anything you need when you go to the ba the hospital and you're going to give birth if i didn't have this experience before coming to japan i will be in trouble because I remember I did not have clothes for the baby age of I didn't buy those things. I, I wasn't prepared because I gave birth early, you know. But I thank God that I could get a workshops to help me get ready to be a mom back home. But in Japan you don't have those things. And also no community support at all. You don't have friends popping in now and then telling you ah no no it's fine i will uh take care of the baby for you today you can just sit down and relax so i'm gonna cook for you the moment you have a baby your hands are tight <laughs> in japan you are full on mom okay no excuses you okay guys this is the end of this video i hope you enjoy thank you so much for watching and if you like it please like it and if you really really loved it please comment and leave your opinions down here if you have been in the same experience i have been or if anything here didn't make sense you can ask me a question anytime i'm happy to answer the questions okay and to please remember the big red button if that button is still red for you what did i do to you now what did I do to you? You are enjoying my content, but you can't subscribe. Hit it, okay? Come on, hit it, hit it, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed this session. Let's see you again next time.